Okay, recording. Um, as always, I have absolutely nothing prepared ahead of time <laughs> for this group. This group is very uh, hacky and we just figure it out as we go. So um, I'm going to be talking about GitHub Actions today, or at least how I use it and my understanding of it, which is uh, sort of incomplete. But I use it for my website primarily, as well as other packages I, I develop. But I'm going to go to my personal website repo, which is all in GitHub. So my website is jhelvy.com. And my website is a distill website. So I gave a talk, I think I'm distill probably last fall or some other time. But distill sites are basically um, a way of using R and R Markdown to create a static website. So all of these things that end in .rmd are, these are RMD files that have information about like these are each each pages on my my website. So, for example, I have an about me page, about.rmd, and this is the code for my about me page. So it's basic markdown. It's just like, hey, welcome to my site. Here's about me. I do stuff in China. I do I swing dance. Um, and the translation of that is when you go to my actual site, you go to about. It looks like this. So it gets compiled into a page um, that looks like this, right? So here's that same stuff. China, swing dancing, right? Images, all kinds of stuff. Um, but the basic code is just plain text. Um, so I'm gonna build this site and, uh, and then show you how it gets served into this. And so it's gonna be a tutorial a bit on like distill, um, but then also how like, uh, how I use GitHub Actions in the background to automatically rebuild my site. So if you're using any site builder like distill, um, um, then just, uh, this, this whole workflow will, should be able to work. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> managing messages on Slack and other things at the same time. Um, so let's, let's talk about how to do this. Uh, I'm going to go to my GitHub, uh, this thing and go to my web page, jhelly.com. Okay. Um, so this is my distill site. This is the same exact files, but just on my local computer. And I'm going to kind of show you what I do when I build my site. I open up our studio. Um, and let's say I'm going to make another page. I'm just going to call it like my test page. So, um, oops, <laughs> uh, I'm on the wrong branch. Hold on, sorry. I've been killing with Quarto lately. I'm going to go back to master. OK, this is my main master branch. Um, oh, no, am I, have I completely broken everything? It looks like I've completely broken everything now. Um, no, I haven't. No, this is okay. Okay, let's go here. Um, open up our studio. And here we go. Um, so here's like that about me page again. Again, it's it's plain text. And if I hit render or knit this page, it will compile this page and turn it into a web page. Um, I'm gonna wait for that to happen. And I'm gonna create a new page called like test. Uh, let's see, I don't know, it looks like it's not knitting. Well, I'm not sure why that's uh, not knitting. Or maybe it did, actually, no, I think it did. I just, it just knit it into the site uh, folder. Test, um, this is called test and it just says, hello world. Um, okay, so this is my demo page. Whoops, wrong key, hello world. Okay, that should go, knit, render. So it's rendering my site now. Um, and if I wanna render just one page, I can hit knit. I can also go to build and say, build my website. And it's gonna run this command, which is like render the site. So it renders every one of these pages and links them all together. And I have other stuff in here. I have posts, I have like blog posts and stuff. So it's rendering all that together right now. And when it's done, it's all going to get dumped into this folder called underscore site. So these are the source files, and then everything gets put here. Can you show where you um, where you say that it should go to the site yeah. file? Inside. Is that in your yep, yep. It's my build YAML. file? Let me go to, where is my YAML? Uh-oh. I'm having all kinds of issues today because I was playing around with Quarto, and I should not have been. And that's the next generation of this. So this site YAML uh, file uh, uh, is where I define everything about my, 
my site. So this is the name, title, kinds of stuff like this. Output dir is where I want to send it to. So I think by default, this is called docs or something like that. I send it to this thing called underscore site. So it'll create this little folder. And after, after it renders, and I can define all kinds of stuff here too about like the nav bar, like about lab research. These are the pages that I want it to show. When you go to my site, that's what you see here, right? So these are all individual pages, right? Lab.html, about.html. They're all individual pages, but they're sort of linked together through this menu. And you can define that here. So that's the, the basics of my site. There's a lot of other options and things I've customized in here, but when I, when I hit build and I say render my, you know, build my site, that's what it does is it dumps everything into here. Um, and so now you can see this test page, here it is. And it just says test, hello world. Like there's no other, everything else is sort of just templated content that's the same on every page. So this is now a local page. You can see the URL is different. It's local in my computer. This is actually on the web. This is local and these should work, right? They're, they're, they're linked together. They're just, um, they're linked on this uh, home folder here. All right, so that's kind of what's happening. I'm having some build problems, but that's the gist of it. Um, so you can edit your site, you can design it and get it working exactly the way you want. Um, and uh, create a bunch of content uh, and build it locally. But then you have to now like get those files onto the web somehow. So <clears throat> I, I think in my previous one, I talked about how you can use Netlify to just drop this entire folder. Um, Netlify.com has this, um, once you've logged in, I, I log in with my GitHub account. And I think you can just like go to add a new site and I think deploy manually is the thing. Yeah, you can just take this entire folder and dump it there. Um, I'm sorry, everything here, everything in this file, if you just dump it here, it will, it'll just put that up on a website. It'll be something.netlify.com. You know, that'll Wait, be- Wait, so just which folder is that? Is that your whole- This is my site folder. folder. This is the one that it built. Okay, so that's the only folder. It's everything within that site folder. Yep. Everything that's in here is um, uh, is this is the website. It's all static pages. It's been rendered, and I'm going to dump it here. And this just makes it. Um, I, I hope this works. <laughs> Usually, this just goes. Um, you can create. You know, you can customize your domain name and stuff. But it looks like it did it. So I'm going to go here and see where it went. Um, published to Zippy Hamster. <laughs> so this is the, the name it, it, it created. Uh, oh, page not found. <laughs> so it's not working. But it push, pushes it to here. And then I can go back and like, you know, internally here, I can, I can change the names and stuff. Um, but that's, that's, you know, the hacky way to very quickly just get it up on the web. Um, that's not how I actually render my site. Uh, uh, so I still use Netlify, but I use it in a different way. Um, so I'll say that, you know, what, what I do is, first of all, when I make a change, like this test.rmd file, I added this file in, I push it to GitHub. So over here, this all looks so wrong because I've added um, all these folders. I'm going to just delete this to see if it's, if it's still showing up. Um, this hidden Quarto file should not be here. Yeah. Um, this test.rmd file was new. And so when I have that, I add it here I push it to GitHub and when I do it it'll it'll show up here and so now I have all my source files on this repo this jhelvy.com repo um, which is just a copy of what's on my computer like these folders here everything except for the site um, the site folder is where the rendered files go but the raw files themselves the the rmd files that's the main thing that's on here um, so the key, the key function here was this like render site function. Uh, Emma, you have a question. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it looks quite interesting. I mean, putting all of these pages together and, and uploading, but, uh, sometimes you get to have to pay for hosting a website. This entire process, does that involve you having to pay to host? No. Totally free. 
Yeah, that's totally why I'm. Free. That's why I do it this way. The only thing I pay for is my name, which is the jhelvy.com URL. I own that, but I'm oh. not paying for web space or anything like that. Everything is hosted on on GitHub. Okay, so that's I'm one gonna... question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then my second question would be. So um, what's the difference in me having to create all of this in R and then um, uploading and me using a template that has already been pre-built and just inputting things to be able to create a website advantage yeah. of having to do everything from scratch? There's totally, so uh, there's totally other uh, really useful site builders like um, that are more interactive. They feel more like you're editing like your Facebook page or something where it's just like you mm -hmm. click here Mm -hmm. edit the content and hit save. Mm -hmm. um, so things like weebly.com, I would recommend for that. Like these are really simple or square. I think it's, yeah, this is actually by square. I think they own by square now, but you know, you can, you can create a very like drag and drop type thing. Um, most of them are free. Again, you'll end, I think it ends in like something.weebly.com will be free. Um, you can pay for uh, more professional templates and things, but it's, I mean, this is a very good way to build a, a simple site website. If you want to just have a website about like, here's me, this is what I do. This okay. is a, a great way to do it. Involves no coding. Um, okay. So the, the benefit of using Distill um, is if you want to build a site in Markdown in particular, if you're comfortable with Markdown, you like using it. And for me in particular, a lot of my blog posts and things are about, um, about code, like uh, in this one, I simulate the squid game bridge scene using R code. Um, so I have a lot of like code and output in the post. And okay. this is very hard to like create in something yeah, like we But yeah. it works very well in our markdown because I can actually just insert the R code and it'll compile. So uh, if, you're have, if you have technical sites or you have content like this that you want to create, then this overall sort of architecture works very well for that. Um, and so anyway, there's, there's definitely trade-offs, but this is a simple static site. And uh, once you get used to editing the pages uh, and writing your content in, it's, it's pretty convenient and it looks pretty nice. Um, so um, I've got my files here. Uh, I have all my R RMD files. There's some floating around HTML files. These shouldn't be here. These are just like errors I need to get rid of. Um, and um, the thing I'll, I'll say is uh, the rendered site, remember, goes into this site folder, right? So I don't have this thing on my main GitHub. It's not there. And that's because in my Git ignore, I got, I said, ignore this folder. All right. So when I, uh, a Git ignore file is, uh, a hidden file that says any of these things, just ignore them. Do not push those to the repo. Um, you could push it here. I could have the site folder here as well, but I don't because I'm not gonna put it here. Where I'm actually gonna put it is on this other branch. So GitHub is this, uh, it's a place to store files, but each of your repositories can have different branches. And those branches are just like a tree. Like you can have shared code for a point in time and then at some point break off and go do something different. So my GitHub pages branch is that shared is the rendered folder. So all of the files in this thing, all these rendered HTML files, they go here, all right? So this is the actual uh, website files that I need to create the site, to show the site to someone, they're already rendered. And I separate these for, for a couple of reasons, but the main one is the, I basically am never going to hand edit these files. Anything that ends in .html, I'm not touching that. All right, because HTML code kind of looks uh, very messy. Like if I were to look at this, um, it looks like this. And I don't want to try to edit this. Like this just, oof, like forget it. Uh, this, this is very complicated stuff. Um, and uh, it's very long. Uh, I don't want that. What I'm editing is this, just the raw content, right? So I edit the markdown text. And when I hit knit, it generates this file. So I put it on a totally separate branch because I don't want to ever touch these things. Um, the only things I'm editing are in the master branch, the, the raw like RMD files. 
So uh, every time I edit a file, uh, edit like an RMD file, I push it to my main repo. And what happens is I'm, I use GitHub Actions to use this command. I'll have this, I have this little file here called build, build site. And what this does is it, it, <clears throat> it, it, it sources a custom functions that I wrote. N none of these things are really necessary. These are things that I've customized on my site. The main thing you need is to render the site. So there's the render site function from this R Markdown package. Um, when I render the site, uh, it, that's when it creates this site folder with all these things in it. So what I can use GitHub Actions for is I can say, hey, go to this main repo where all these things are and run that command. Like run this on a computer that's in the cloud and render my site. And when you're done, take that folder and dump it here. All right, so that's the workflow is I, I push a command to the main branch. Then in the background, this action kicks in that says, hey, I see a change. I'm going to render your site. And instead of putting everything into this site folder here, I'm going to take all those files and stick them into this GitHub branch. So I have this two branches that are always kind of working in harmony. And you'll see that this is, you know, this command is the same for every one of these. It, it'll, it's this little rocket ship. These are automated uh, pushes. So I didn't make these commits, uh, the, the machine did. So what GitHub Actions is actually doing is you can see every time I've made a change, like I've made a lot of changes uh, in the past two months here to my website. Every time I make a change, it, it kicks in this um, set of actions where it does two things. It builds the site by calling that render site R function, and then it deploys the site to my GitHub pages. So the build is, um, here's all the actions that it happened, right? And it tells you this is it. This is like looking at the terminal of a computer and it does all these different steps. It's a bunch of stuff. You know, I don't really look at this all too carefully. Um, um, and it completes the job. And once that's done, then it deploys it and it, uh, it sends it, so it says deploying to GitHub pages. So it's gonna send it over there. So that's the okay. main workflow. Um, Can I back up the workflow a little bit? Sure. To like make sure I'm understanding this. So if you were just starting out, yeah. you wanna have a repo for your website. Yeah, like You this. have the main branch. You're gonna that's build it, yeah. all these RMD pages. Mm-hmm. You need to have that YAML that says you're going to put it into a site folder. And then. Um, well, anywhere, really, like wherever, like the YAML, wherever you want to put this. I mean, it could be called docs. It yeah. It could be called, you know, my site or whatever it is. And that's just going to be the name of whatever this is. I use underscore site because it pops up at the top of my folder. <laughs> purely for like that reason, like I have all these other things uh, up here. And when I use an underscore, it's at the top. So Got it's it. not just like floating around in here. It's like always at the top. So it's easy to find. That's why I do that. Yep. Okay. Uh, so everything will be on a main branch, but then you need to, do you need to set up that second branch in advance? You do. Uh, okay. You do need to create this GitHub pages branch. So this gh-pages is sort of a standard on GitHub where a lot of things are, um, this is a very common workflow for a lot of projects where you might have the raw code on one branch and then you have like the documentation about that on another branch. And you wanna keep them all in the same repo because they're all kind of related to each other. So this is very common for like software developers where I'm making some package of software the main code lives here in this main branch, but then I have a pages branch where I'm telling you how to use my software. And that's a whole different purpose. Um, so you have to create it. If you go to your view all branches, you can just uh, somewhere in here, create a new one. Um, I forgot where I do this, but I, I did it here. Uh, somewhere in here, you can uh, create a new branch. Yeah, oh, just type it in, GitHub pages. If you, if you do that and hit enter, it'll, it'll create one. I already have it here. Um, so you create your GitHub pages branch. And um, once you have that, then uh, this deployment thing will work. If you, if you run it the exact same way I have it right now, because the way I've written it, it says deploy to GitHub pages. 
Um, but if you haven't created that branch, it's going to error. It's going to go, hey, I, I don't have anywhere to deploy this thing to. OK. Um, so, so let's. Yeah, now, yeah. How do you create the action? And let's it's, talk about that. Yeah, like we're finally down to like now getting into the GitHub action. So the action, like it takes a lot to understand the overall workflow of like building the site. Now I have to control this thing. Like what is actually happening in here? Um, so again, another hidden file. So all of these things are like these little hidden files, which by the way, if you're on a Mac, it's command shift period. The period symbol command shift period will hide them or show them. So like if you're looking at it and you're like, I can't see it, just type command shift period and then it'll pop up. Now you can see your hidden folders. Um, so there's a hidden folder that you have to create called dot GitHub. And in there you have a workflows folder. You have to call it workflows. And can then there's I a build this question real quick. Yeah. Yeah. I like trying to create that like a folder that starts with a period got like a lot of errors. Is there an easy way to create that folder? I don't know. So there I... are um there's another <laughs> There's another package I think for um, uh, for creating this uh, straight from R, and I'm trying to remember what it was called. I think it's called like uh, GitHub Actions R package. It was just like I think it's called GH Actions or Actions. Okay, Actions. Um, there is a package here for doing this. Um, this is a bunch of default actions <clears throat> for doing different things like setting up R in a virtual machine, um, uh, creating package, uh, a documentation for a uh, R package or creating a website and stuff like that. I think this has some ways of generating that. And then there's also use this R package. Um, the use this package that might um, have some ways of, of creating this. I would say go to these and play around. Okay. Um, <laughs> use this is is often the main package people go to for like creating like templated things like i want to make a package then i would go to use this and there's like uh uh probably a thing about like make a package like create package here you go and you run this function and it generates a template of like all the things you need for making a package so um check those out um but you should be able to just create a dot github uh folder and put a workflow in it and um, a workflows folder. And then you have a dot, another dot YAML. Uh, in my case, it's called build site. And I just, you can call it whatever you want, but that's my main workflow. I, I only have one. Uh, you can have multiple, but um, if I go to my workflows, um, I should in here be able to see uh, here, maybe it's this one, render and deploy. No, I don't want to do that. Where is it? Usually I can find it. Oh, here it is right here, right in front of me. Build site YAML. That's the uh, YAML itself. So this is what's inside there. And there's a bunch of stuff in here. So it looks kind of like scary, but <laughs> it's just pointing to this file here. Same file as this. Um, so what this is doing, I did not handwrite this at all. Like I said, I like, there's a bunch of different things uh, that are required here. I can walk you through like what's actually going on, but I took it from, Okay, Majid's um, going, see ya. Um, I took it from, I think it was from this one. I, I just found in the R, uh, R live actions uh, uh, site here, I found some templates and I copied that template over. Um, and I took it from the package development uh, template. So there's a template for creating a documentation page for a package. And I took all of that. And the only thing I changed at the very end was this. Instead of like creating the package thing, I just said render my site as a distill site, but everything above it was purely copy pasted. Um, so what it's doing is it's saying on every push, meaning every time I make a commit to this branch, like my main, my main branch, um, either called main or master, um, every time I push something, I want you to do this workflow, which is called render and deploy my site. So what it does is um, it's using a Mac OS. So it's actually creating like a Mac OS virtual machine in the background. Um, these things are necessary for passwords and stuff. So just keep all this here. Um, if you change one of these little things, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, it has to do a few things. These are the things it's using. 
So I'm using this actions package. I'm using uh, from this actions, uh, rlib actions. I'm setting up R. I need pandoc, which is what I'm going to use for converting the RMDs to HTMLs. Um, and then it has some dependencies. Um, this is any other packages that I'm going to need in my site. So if I have uh, other things I use, like tidyverse on my website, I want to. Um, this is where I'm going to put them in. It caches them, so I don't have to always reinstall them. Um, then it installs them, and then finally it renders my site. So this is the only part I changed. And you can see, like this is our code, right? It's just running this. So it says, you know, run install my packages, um, run this file called build site, which is over here in my main folder. I have a um, where was it? Build site here, build site.r, which sources my functions, creates a footer, and it renders the site. For most people, this is the only thing you would need. So you could just put this line of code right here. I I have a little bit extra stuff that I've I want to run first before I build my site. That's that's all I do. So it, it runs that R code and it's it is running this in the background. Um, and then it deploys it. And so I'm using this thing from this other guy. He created this deployment um, action that otherwise I would have to have a lot of other stuff like this, but I can just point to his um, action that he created and say, use that, which all it does is say, take this folder. That's where my uh, website lives and send it to this branch. That's all I had to do. <clears throat> so pretty much from this part down was the only bit that I edited. Everything else was, you know, straight copied from the default um, action for deploying a uh, website documentation page. So there's a bunch of stuff going on here, um, but it really is just build my site and then deploy that folder that gets created, deploy it to my GitHub pages. All right, um, and even this last bit, you know, isn't you don't have to do it this way. You know, if you if you wanted to just build it and keep it all inside your site folder or whatever you called it, like docs or whatever, and you just kept that on your main repository, then you could just stop right here. You could just say, build my site and leave it there. And then when you go to your main branch, you, you, you would have your dot, you know, underscore site folder here and it would be updated because it would, it would build it and stick it there. I just like separating it onto two pages. So now it gets built and it gets pushed here. So um, that's what Actions is doing. And I can tell you, it, I mean, it is kind of a frustrating workflow when things stop working. Like most of the time you can see they've been working, but you can go back in time and find times where there's lots of red, uh, where like I tried something, I, I made a change and I broke something and I have to go back and change it. Um, so you'll see lots of red before you see green. <laughs> but once you get used to it, um, it's a really handy little way to organize your, your website. So in general, the, the, the way it now feels once I have everything working is, you know, I make a change, I find a typo, maybe I want to call this technology or something. I make that change, I make a commit, I push it to GitHub, and then I forget about it. And I never have to do anything ever again, because I know that in the background, it's now going to deploy my action, rebuild the site, push the site to my GitHub pages folder. And now my site lives here uh, and everything's up to date. I haven't yet showed you how I now display this to, you know, jhelvy.com, but like, that's before the- Before you do that though, can you, can you show again? So you go over to the actions tab and then how did you create that workflow? Um, I did it by just making this thing myself. Like I made a .github folder and I stuck this YAML file in here and I edited my YAML in uh, like in our studio, you can go uh, And that's find it. something on your main branch and that'll automatically create the action when you- Yeah, if you've got, that. If, you, if you've got this hidden .github folder inside a workflows fo uh, fo folder, it. you'll, okay. it'll pop up here. And you can see the different you know, workflows. You can create one here though. I mean, you can also just say new workflow and um, set it up, but it tries to let you like 
use a standardized one for, you can tell, I mean, GitHub is used by the whole world for all sorts of software development. So um, most of these things like fighting, I don't think there is one for distill. Maybe there is, um, uh, no, <laughs> there's no templated workflow for distill. So I had to kind of just like manually make it. Right, um, okay. <clears throat> but that's what's going on. Um, now, um, making this thing live, first of all, here's a really nice little hack that you can use to test things um, before you make it live. Um, so GitHub pages, uh, uh, you can, any, any file basically on GitHub is actually hosted on the web already. So if you go to like my about page, for example, it'll, this is the raw HTML and that's just showing you, you know, what it looks like. I'm never going to edit this, but if I go to raw, it'll just show me the raw code and here it is. And it's not rendering it the way I want. Like I, I want it to be hosted somewhere for my browser to know like how to look at this right now. It's just displaying the code, but I want my browser to actually render the code. So a really nice little trick is you can go to the URL where it says GitHub user content. You can say raw dot git hack. If you change it to git hack and hit enter. Now it renders the page and you get to see what it looks like on a browser. Um, so this is now actually live. Like I can send you this link, this exact link, this raw.github, githack.com, and you can see um, my page. So here, I'm gonna send it in the chat. Like this should work. This is a live web page. Um, and actually all of the links should work because they're all linked together in the same, uh, the same spot, right? So my whole entire website is fully visible by using this terribly long, messy uh, URL. Um, and of course, I don't wanna tell everyone that my website name is that. Um, that's, that's kind of a mess. I want it to just be jhelly.com. So that's a little hack you can use, um, but it is now you know, being served by GitHub. So I'm not paying for that service. GitHub has it hosted on the web for me. Um, what I actually do to deploy my um, website is I use Netlify. Net, not Netflix, Netlify. <laughs> um, Netlify, and what I do is um, I can link it to my GitHub. I've already logged in through GitHub. And so I have several websites here, but um, what this thing is doing <clears throat> um, is I can, I, I think when you create a new site, it kind of walks you through the template, but there's a template one for using, um, you can point to a GitHub repo and say, um, the source code for my website files are all on GitHub at this repo. And when I do that, I send it to, um, to this, this is it. So it's going to this repository. Um, it, this is where it, it knows to go. And I had to, um, I had to link it here. And so when I linked it to that, that file, what I did was I said, use this branch, right? So use the GitHub pages branch not the main branch, because the main branch is just full of a bunch of code. The GitHub pages branch is full of things that end in .html, and so it knows how to deploy that. So that's all I did was I said, go, um, go to this repo and point to this, uh, pay, this uh, branch. And on that branch, I want you to take all those files and deploy them to the web. And setting it up where I own the URL, like the jhelby.com, that's something you have to go buy. Netlify doesn't um, sell those things, but um, you can by default, I think actually I already have one for just like jhelby. Let me see if I can go to another site. Um, let's go to sites. Um, does it work? <laughs> Back to home, let's go home. <clears throat> You can just create a, a blank one. Uh, this is my zippy hamster that I just deployed, which is not working at all. Um, let's see if I can do this. Um, start from a template, import an existing project from GitHub. Uh, I'm gonna send it to, I already authorized it, so it's already there. Um, if you didn't, you'd have to authorize it and say, yes, log in, go to this GitHub, uh, go to this one. This is the one I've already redeployed. Uh, I'm sending it to the GitHub, mass, the GitHub pages branch. That's the one I want you to use and deploy my site. And so if I do this, it should just deploy it to some random URL that it's going to create. Um, 
And then I can go back in and edit that URL. So Netlify is another free service that kind of does all this for you. Um, and you can pay for upgrades, but the base free stuff works perfectly fine for me. So my website is actually the collection of like three things. I had to buy the domain name, the jhelvy.com domain name. Um, then I had to use GitHub to uh, host and render all of my website files. And then I'm using Netlify to actually deploy them to the web and make them live. All right, so this is my permalink to my website. And here it is. Now I have this crazy long URL. So something, something, whatever, dot .netlify app, And this is my website. It's now live. And I can obviously like go um, deploy settings. I can go like change this so that it isn't this like horrible name. Um, I probably, I don't know where in here I need to change it. Deploy previews. That's previews. Um, Somewhere in here, I have my domain settings where I can, oh, it's probably in general. Uh, change site name. Yeah, here we go. Let's not do fanciful puffy puff. Let's call it demo. That's probably already taken. Uh, I'll just do jhelvy, jhelvy.netlify.app. Maybe that'll work. Ah, I've already used it. So let's call it jph.netlify. Wow, very hard to find one. Someone give me um, hipposrule.netlify. <laughs> Okay, that works. <laughs> so hipposrule.netlify.app is now live and there's our website, right? So it's, um, as long as it's not taken, you can, you can use one and have a free domain that ends in .netlify.app. Um, and, and if you own the domain, it's just a, a few more minor settings in your domain settings to go in here and say, oh, I can buy this. I can, I can buy hipposrule.com for 10.99. <laughs> so you can you can you know create i guess you can register it now um you can buy it you know you can create your own like jhelvy.com buy it and then you own that too and now this this will change to whatever you've purchased so so deploying is is pretty straightforward i mean the you just follow through the netlify like menus and everything works um it's it's getting the github part i think set up to have all those things automated that's um that can be like where you spend hours debugging. Uh, but once you have it work workflow set up, it's beautiful. It's so nice because you just make changes, push them to GitHub and forget about it. And within, you know, 10 minutes, all of that has happened. It's built it. Netlify has detected that there's a change and it will update the site uh, automatically. So this is actually also how I do all of my course sites, like my um, current course site for this semester. Uh, the source files for this are also on GitHub and it's done the exact same way where here's all the main pages. They're all just RMD files, um, homeworks, uh, class periods, like all of this stuff that I post on the website is just an RMD. Um, I have an action set up. So every time I make a push, it goes there and it, and it sends the rendered files to GitHub pages. And there's those get deployed to this, um, to this link. So um, I use this workflow for a bunch of different types of websites and um, it works quite nicely once it's again, tuned and set up. Uh, the initial setup is usually a lot of headaches, uh, mostly with getting GitHub Actions to like correctly run. But all my source code is open. So you can go, you know, go to my GitHub and toy around, like find examples of something and see if you can implement the same thing. Um, even the action itself, you know, should be visible. You should be able to go here and see my, you know, rendered and deploy workflow and copy this over and see if you can get this to run on yours. Uh, that's, that's it. That's, I think, everything for how I've set up my website. So I'll say I, there's no manual on this. I never, I did not know how to do any of this before I started teaching, actually. I, the main reason I learned how to do this was because I wanted to have a site like this. I wanted to have a website for my classes. And as I started to build my first class, I found other people who had done this kind of workflow. And some people had written like blog posts. Um, I just found other people's courses, their course sites. And I copied, pasted together code until I found a workflow that worked for me. Um, and a lot of people use this exact workflow for building a website. So there's a community of people out there. It's a nice thing about open source code is you can 
find examples and, and learn how to do it uh, for yourself. Um, okay, any other questions on things here? If not, I think I'll just stop recording now. Uh, stop.